Hey everyone, James here again. With America's first socially distanced concert taking place this week in Arkansas, I figured now's as good a time as any to talk about the future of live music. First and foremost, shows are not gonna just turn on like a light switch all of a sudden. They're gonna be spread out all over the world in fits and bursts, and they might come back for a while and then go away, depending on what happens in the pandemic. Second, the first shows to return will likely be small venue shows. We're not gonna get back to arenas or stadiums, at least not here in the United States, until 2021 at the earliest, most likely third or fourth quarter, according to Live Nation CEO Michael Rapino. And what those concerts look like between now and then, well, that's up for anyone's guess, but I'm gonna tell you a few key things that are developing right now in the music industry that could shape the future of our business. Starting with what I think is the most interesting and creative thing to come out of the coronavirus pandemic, drive-in concerts. Now you've probably seen some headlines and maybe you've read a few articles. Either way, no worries, I'm playing a video right now so that you can get a feel, but it's exactly what it sounds like. People pay to attend a concert at a drive-in theater, often during the day, because let's face it, they're playing movies at night, and they watch the show from inside their vehicle. And you're not listening to the show through the speakers on stage, but through your car stereo, just like you would a drive-in movie. So it's kind of like listening to a live album while watching that live album be performed right in front of you. It's a unique situation, but it's turning out some huge numbers in Europe. As you can see in this footage, there are lots of cars there. And if you look around online, there's even a few EDM shows that have taken place at drive-in theaters. Now the rules are pretty simple. You stay in your vehicle for the entire duration of the concert unless you have to get out to use the restroom or buy concessions and there are rules in place to control how many people can do that and where you stand in line and so forth. Now there's already a few artists in the United States that are planning to go on drive-in theater tours in the coming months, but much like traditional venues, not all drive-in theaters are open yet, but this could be an avenue that we see explored more throughout the summer months. There are no music festivals happening in the US this summer. I know that there are a few that haven't canceled yet, but let's be honest, it's a matter of time. So in the meantime, when people wanna see live music and be at least somewhat outdoors, drive-in theaters pr provide a little bit of a solution. Yes, you're stuck in your car. Yes, the only way to really applaud is by honking your horn or flashing your lights, but it's better than nothing. And right now, that's something worth having. But let's talk about traditional venues for a second, because as I said, live music is returning in the state of Arkansas this week, and Missouri is not far behind, so shows will be happening soon, but they likely won't look anything like what you remember. The key to any story that you read about these venues, and I'm gonna break down some of the new rules in a second, is that everything happening right now is essentially an experiment. What you see at one show might not be the same as the next, and it's gonna be like that for at least the next several weeks, if not months, as venue owners and these giant concert companies like Live Nation and AEG figure out how to safely hold shows that both turn a profit and keep fans safe. So it's gonna be a little bit of a give and take along the way. What one show does, you might not see at the next, or you might see some general trends start to emerge. For the show happening in Arkansas this week by artist Trevor McCready, it's taking place at a venue that traditionally holds over 1,500 people, but this performance has a capacity limit of 229. Tickets are being sold in what they call fan pods. These are clusters of seats spread out throughout the venue with social distancing measures in place. So if you wanna sit in row C and there are six seats available, you have to buy all six seats for you and your friends. And if you have less than that, too bad, you have to buy all six seats. That's just how it works for right now. There are also limits on how many people can use the bathroom at once and prepackaged drinks with lids and everyone has to have their temperature checked as soon as they enter the venue. And the same goes for the staff. In fact, there's probably way more security measures in place to ensure the staff is safe and that everyone is healthy before the show even begins. But again, all these measures will likely change as we move forward. And don't think that you're gonna see arena shows or festival shows or stadiums anytime in 2020. Let's just kiss that idea goodbye. Hope it comes back in 2021, but that's gonna be dependent on a lot of factors. How comfortable people feel around other people that they don't know is a good one. How we're doing in battling the pandemic is another. How easily we can check people's temperatures and make sure that the people entering the venue don't have a high likelihood of spreading the disease. And above all else, a vaccine. Because once we have a vaccine, a lot of these problems go away and we can get a lot closer to returning to some sense of normalcy. But until that happens, you're gonna see a lot of experimenting, you're gonna see a lot of rules in place, you're gonna see lower capacity shows, you're gonna just not have that traditional concert experience. It will return, but it's gonna take some time. But when concerts return, what will we wear? Well, there's a company called Microshell that is currently promoting a new product. 
It is a suit that goes from the waist up and has a helmet on it, a clear helmet, mind you, that is said to protect you from viruses like COVID-19. Now, this is just a prototype, and as you can see here in the video, it has a lot of nifty features. There's an N95 style mask, there's speakers inside, there's a lot going on in this suit, and there's no price tag yet, but companies like this are starting to emerge at an alarming rate. Everyone wants to get in on COVID solutions that are not necessarily a vaccine, which at the end of the day is what we need. And until we have a vaccine, there are going to be people trying to sell us all sorts of products that will promise some sense of normalcy without actually providing us with normalcy. I mean, let's look at this suit. While it might be cost effective, maybe, and it could be comfortable, doubtful, there is something about it that is kind of nice to know that if we wore it, you could go back to a concert. I mean, if you had this thing on tomorrow, you could be seeing the Foo Fighters. Well, then maybe I would take an interest in the suit. But I just don't think that we're going to see a large amount of people adapting this. And, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe we will, or maybe some better, smaller, less covering my entire body solutions will come along. But for right now, it's important to see that this is an emerging trend. People are trying to find workarounds because we don't have a vaccine, but we want life to return to normal and people will pay for life to return to normal. So keep an eye out for businesses like Microshell trying to sell you suits like these in the near future. And there is one more big unknown, actually two, that a lot of people aren't really ready to talk about yet. And that is the future of both independent artists and independent music videos. It's pretty safe to say that the giant names in the music business will be fine. The Weeknd, Halsey, Justin Bieber, Bad Bunny, Diplo, all these people will have careers and tours as soon as coronavirus is over. And the same can go for all the Live Nation and AEG venues across America and around the world. But what about the independents? Because right now, there is this economic pinch happening, then everyone is trying to convince you that you need to donate, and that you need to buy merch, and that you need to support the things that you love, but it's unclear how many people are hearing that call and taking it seriously. So real quick, if you love independent venues, and I assume that you do because if you're watching this video, you probably tour in them or you attend them frequently and you want to see them continue, then you need to visit the National Independent Venue Association website. That's NEVA for short. They have a really great tool that will allow you to contact your representatives and ask them to help bail out independent venues because there are more than 800 of them across the United States that are in danger of closing if they can't open soon and start getting money back in the door. And a bailout from the government would be very helpful. So again, check them out. It takes a few clicks and you can email your representatives. They make it very easy. And the second one is to support your favorite musicians because outside of the top 10 on the charts, most artists are really reliant on tour revenue in order to stay afloat. And if they can't tour for an entire year, for example, a lot of them might not be able to get back out on the road. They're gonna have to get real jobs. They have families to provide for and a lot of bills and all those other things that you and I have in our daily lives. So if they wanna get out there, they need support from the fans right now more than ever. So if your favorite artist is on Twitch, watch and support, donate to a Patreon, buy merchandise, or just send them money on Venmo. There's no harm in asking if an artist has a PayPal, a Venmo, a Cash App, anything like that, and sending them $10. That could make a world of difference in their lives, especially if all of their fans did that. So lead the charge and support the artists that matter the most to you, as well as the venues, because we need both those things in order for the music business as we know it to continue moving forward. Now, of course, with no clear end to the coronavirus in sight, it's possible that some of the information here will change in the coming weeks or months, and that's why we keep a channel here to keep you updated. So if you haven't already done so, please click the subscribe button down below and join the Music Biz community. We create two to five videos every single week about life in the music business, and we want you to be a part of it. So again, click that subscribe button and join us. And if you've already done that, then you have my sincerest thanks we wouldn't be able to be here without you, and we're excited to continue growing with you. So the only thing left to do is what we do at the end of every episode, and that is that we encourage you to take care of yourself, now more than ever, because you deserve it.